Hello everybody and welcome to my build for the Magic Templar. So I will also be releasing a Mag Decay and a Gank Blade soon after this video, probably in the next couple of days. But this is the focus of this video, an immediate low screen, nice. <laughs> uh, this is my Magic Templar build for support and damage and healing. It's got the lot. But one rule that is worth mentioning before I even talk about the sets is I, as a player, kind of have this thing where I refuse to use sets that don't support a group, even though I almost always play solo on a Magplar. I think that the class pairs so well as a support unit as well as the way it plays offensively solo, defensively solo and all of that. And I do think it's a bit of a waste not to make the most of that with your set choices. You can be greedier potentially to get better stats, but it's just not my thing. Um, but yeah, either way, I don't see myself changing these sets. This patch, I really have enjoyed this, and I don't see much reason to. So, without further ado, our stats. We're going to pop a spell power pot since that's our sorcery. We have 2.4k spell damage, 33.5k magicka, and a huge magicka recovery pool. 2.7k gloriousness. I will explain why we have so much in a sec, because obviously you could change things like the HO. One of the main reasons is that I mostly play no CP, and I'm mostly playing support if I'm in BGs. And in BGs, it can get expensive. But there is another big reason coming up soon. Our crit, 39%, because we source crit from the pot, and we're in light armor. Health, 26.7k, and stamina, just under 18k. You could put that over 18k. I'm not quite fully tried left, whatever you prefer. 3.1k crit resist, as is pretty typical of me, and our food is the tri food gold food. I think it's pretty bad to ever not use this if you can get it on your build. It's very strong. Mundus, as I said, is the atro. We are not a vampire. Resistance is fairly low. We are in light and using no defensive set bar potentate, which we'll get to in a second. So the resistance can be a weak point of this build. We address that in a number of ways, one of those being the large health pool, obviously, but also the sets we're using. Our sets are as follows. First and foremost, my favorite set on Magplar is Overwhelming. This gives us a really good amount of sustain when we're outnumbered. It's a very nice proc damage set. It gives us spell damage, spell damage, magic, which are solid stats, especially with minor sorcery. Spell damage works really well. But most importantly, this sources vulnerability, which is a buff. What is going on with those screens? We cannot source on Templar easily. You want to use a charged staff 100% on this build. It is really a good trait. Do not underestimate it. It guarantees the overwhelming prox vulnerability since it counts as direct damage at the moment. It guarantees we get burning off our second set Groftar and it guarantees we get chilled off another one of our skills and it guarantees minor defile when we light attack with the disease glyph and it guarantees a root from blockade which is our frost source on the back bar. It is so good really really have fallen in love with this trait on Magplar. I'm also using it on DK. Our second set is going to be Groftar. As I said that is where we get our heavy and our heavy. Do not worry about five and one. It's better to go to five on a Templar. Um, there's not really much use for the stamina passives. It's simply not worth it. So I prefer five two. If you do prefer five one feel free to go for it. This game is so scuffed right now. In terms of our glyphs we are Triglyph on every piece bar one, which is our remaining set. The Sash, just any small piece is fine for a Magicka Glyph. That's going to give you 28k no CP Magicka. But that is Hitty. A lot of people are very critical of this set. They like sets like Transmutation, Riposte, Armor Mask. There's all sorts of defensive sets. I have fallen in love with this set because I think it covers the main weaknesses of Magplar tremendously. One of those being that you have no heal over time that's worth using. Some people would argue Living Dark is a really good skill. I actually really dislike it so much so that it's off my bar for skills that some might consider weak. I really don't rate it at all. I think it's very expensive for such a short buff of low healing. It's only good if you're heavily outnumbered, and I just don't believe that happens enough in BGs, which is mostly where I'm playing this build. So I have fallen in love with Hitty. The biggest things on this are the heal over time. You've got no heal over time, but also the roll dodge can be quite beneficial. It is going to be our main defense on this build. Now the Hitty is on our back bar, which means we use a Frost Staff. I prefer this over the Resto. I really like to be able to block Breath of Life. There is a good chance, however, next patch that I'll be using a Frost Staff and a Resto Staff. So Frost on the front bar, sacrificing the damage to try and cover the healing. But we'll see. I don't know yet. I've not been on the PTS. 
That glyph obviously is frost, and that is to guarantee a root when we get the proc from our blockade, which I will show in a second and explain. Finally, we're using two potentate. These are triune, arcane, and infused. Infused magic recovery, triune magic recovery, infused, sorry, arcane reduced cost. That's how I prefer to have my jewelry. By no means should that be exactly how you do it, adjust it as you like. So again, if you want to learn, run a lower recovery, feel free to change that one there, for example, to an arcane spell damage or triune spell damage. This one could change. There's all sorts of places you could drop recovery if you like. But the reason we're using low recovery is I am using the stamina morph of restoring focus. I absolutely love this skill. I think that it is very difficult to source enough stamina regen on a Magicka Templar. And it's also important that we can sustain stamina whilst blocking. This does both. 480 stamina regen, most importantly, while blocking. We cannot get that any other way. This is the way to get it. So if we use that and instead of the magical one, which would give us a recovery and simply replace the magical recovery on our stat sheet, we get exactly the same overall stats as getting our recovery for stamina through sets like Shacklebreaker, Bloodspawn, Serpent Mundus, you name it, except we get that stamina also while blocking. It does exactly the same apart from that as it would for the magical focus. It also saves us a little bit in terms of magical sustain by casting from stamina, but that's just a personal preference. Another strange skill then you'll also see is Sanguine Altar. I absolutely cannot underestimate how good this is when it comes to Battlegrounds because Battlegrounds is a small area space. This lasts for 40 seconds and is a really decent burst heal for anybody in need. As a support skill, it's excellent, but it also gives minor lifestyle for yourself. And honestly, the difference that that comes to is pretty damn good. I like it a lot, but this is mostly there for the support in a battleground scenario. From altar alone, without synergies, you're looking in the region of 500k healing per battleground. That is as much as mutagen or rapid regen will get with the downtime on them, because this has almost no downtime because it lasts for such a ridiculously long duration of time. If you do not want to use this, or you're playing open world and you're moving a lot, feel free to change it. There are all sorts of useful skills you could go for. One of those, if you do still like it, is Living Dark. That is probably what I would put here if I didn't like it. But genuinely, even solo, I prefer Sanguine Altar to Living Dark. I've played them both out for a good 50, 60 hours each, and I prefer Sanguine Altar, which surprised me as well. But I definitely advise giving it a try. If you hate it, take it off and go back to Living Dark or whatever skill you so prefer. Blockade then is going to be another support dot. This is also going to supply a guaranteed minor maim from our chilled status. It is an excellent way of rooting our opponent, a guaranteed route on anyone that's not a Nord, and it's a good AoE pressure in terms of dot. It's a great way to control opponents. Again, this is a fairly battleground specific skill because you might be moving a lot. I still run open world because I find a lot of use from the skill. But if you don't want to use that, I would replace that with Reflective Light. The remaining two heals on the back bar, Honor the Dead, don't bother with Breath of Life. It's awful now, complete waste of space. And I use the damaging morph of the Purify. Very aggressive playstyle on this build. If you do struggle to survive, simply change it to the Purify. That gives you five purges and it will help you on that. Final back bar is Temporal Guard. This is simply there for minor protection when stuck on the back bar, unable to do anything but heal, so that we can't proc our spear passives that will also give us minor protection. So it's just there as a backup option. But there are also times where actually casting the ult can be a really solid way of escaping trouble. So if we do get a large group on us, we can go up a surface, jump, cast it, and we're good. Much like an image on Nightblade, it can be a bit of a lifesaver. And to be honest, all of the other defensive ults as a Templar really suck, unless you're running a one-hand shield. If you do decide to go one-hand shield, obviously charged isn't going to help you. But if you went one-hand shield on the back bar instead of blockade, then I would run the one-hand shield ult. So if you don't like blockade, one-hand shield and go one-hand shield ult. Front bar is far more traditional. We are running with toppling charge for off balance and a CC, jabs for our main burst damage and sustain damage and pretty much all sources of damage. Really nice skill. I like the healing. I like the damage. Does everything. Ellie Drain for a uh, Minor Magicka Steel Sustain and also the Breach. You could also run the Templar skill that gives the same buff. I actually forget the name of it now. This one here. 
you can morph that to the one that gives an AOE Minor Magic still if you are running in a group that cannot have the time to actually get the duration to proc Elemental Drain because this will work fully in a group. Our Overwhelming guarantees AOE Vulnerability benefits the group. Hitty AOE Heal and reduce costs for our group benefits the group. And Groftar guaranteed Burning which will increase the passives of some skills, classes, builds and particularly give us good AOE damage. So everything about this plays as well in a group. Remaining skills are Purifying Light for a single target burst, and Solar Barrage is my preferred final skill. This is pretty decent damage still, even after the large nerf. The dot is not so good, but the Empower really adds up on an offensive window, and the dot is still respectable. So I do think it's a decent skill. Again, this skill is flexible. I cannot stress this enough. Solar Barrage, Blood Altar, Blockade of Frost, if you wish. They're all flexible skills. Feel free to adjust them to your preference. The other ones I suggest keeping. But, again, don't have to. It's your choice what you run on your build. Last but not least is Crescent Sweep. This is a burst magic damage ult. Really nice ult. Definitely the one to go for. No questions at all. I think that covers all of that. It does. Good. Our potions then are Spell Damage, Spell Crit, and Magicka instead of Entropy. I really advise going this way. I think it's far better to guarantee that you've got the crit up all the time rather than relying on Vamp Bane and Entropy. Entropy is a bit suboptimal these days. Anyway, I only use it if I can't source the sorcery in any other way. Um, I'm just not that great because the dot's got nerfed so heavily. And Vampire Bane, again, same problem. The dot is really not as good as it used to be. Still one of the better choices, but I don't know. I like to know that I've got my crit up when stuck on the back bar. Again, if you're too defensive, you may not be able to get Reflective Flight off. Your crit goes down, and that's going to lower your defensive capabilities. In general, I just don't see a need for Tripod when I change to this morph anyway, and I really like the Spell Power Box for my playstyle. Last but not least then is our Race and CP. Race is a high elf. I think that that is a solid race for Templar. I would not change it for the life of me, because the channel focus helps us. The Stamina Sustain very much helps us. Again, a block source of Stamina Sustain. Um, also worth mentioning that Hitty reduces the cost of block, by the way, which again helps us sustain that block healing. But it also gives us Spell Damage and Max Magicka. So High Elf is definitely my choice. Some people like Breton, Argonian. I really think the High Elf is the better race. Um, but each to their own. CP, last but not least, is one in Siphoner. Normal routine. That is going to require a Purge to get rid of, even though it does nothing else, which limits the Purge ability of classes against us. 72 in Wall of Break, 3-3 free, free in Sprinter. This is fairly reduced, so to be honest, I might even move it right now into Bash. Sprint got a base reduction a while ago. Now it's a bash. There you go. 23 a moon cast. Stamina recovery. Maximum into magic recovery. Again, that's why our recovery looks so high in CP. It's dramatically lower in no CP. And we do not have the magical focus to source it. So that's why we go high recovery. 56 in Shadow Wolf blocking. And 40 in tumbling. It means we waste no points. In the blue tree, 27 in blessed. 40 in elfborn for crit. 37 in elements defender for elements. 48 into pen. 3 into Staff Expert, 40 into Master Arms, and 75 in Pharmaturge. We have a wide spread of points here. Every single one of these trees is both important and useful. 75 in Pharmaturge is going to be worth stacking for the Exploiter Passive for the 10% damage. That's going to outweigh anything else since we have really good off-balance uptime from Toppling Charge. And more importantly, we are getting benefit from these points anyway. It helps us on Overwhelming, Groftar, and a number of our skills. Finally, the red tree is 72 in ironclad and 52 in resistant. All that matters is we get the reinforced passive. That's why we go a little higher. Direct damage is our bigger threat. Don't need unchained, so we have adjusted these down slightly. We're on a class that can purify quite well. So just 20 in fixed skinned, 43 hardy, 43 elements defender. And then standard routine in here plus a bit. I normally have 27 quick recovery, free in expert, but you're going to get more benefit from the increased healing now we're running Hitty and Purify and Honor the Dead. So we go for 37 instead in quick recovery. I think that covers everything. I hope this build will be useful to some people. I cannot stress enough, this is my preferred playstyle. So if somebody comes in, insight in the build, feel free to tag them this moment. You do not have to run this build. This is what I personally think is performing the best this patch. I have tried standard builds, I've tried common builds, I've tried everything. It is solid. Oh, one final thing worth noting. Now there is another set that's exceptional instead of overwhelming and that is Drow King. 
It is extremely cheese. It's mostly good in 1v1 no CP, also good in 1v1 general, but in 1v1 no CP or battlegrounds, that is extremely fucked. It's so overpowered. Um, so yeah, it, it is worth looking into and investing the time into just to show you what that does real fast. You may also see me use this on another build in the near future. But this does the following. Find my lightning staff. All right, screw it. We'll look at the other one. Frost staff. Magica spell pen recovery. Dealing direct damage to an enemy places a ghostly curse on your enemy for six seconds. They take 617 extra damage from all abilities. So every tick of every dot, every tick of jabs, the lot adds up. If you're ever getting incinerated and you've got a light bluish, bluish greenish glow around you, it is probably somebody using this set. Really nasty 1v1. I prefer to take on groups in this build, and for that reason, my preference is an AoE set to which I favour overwhelming. But each to their own. I hope you find a build that suits you. I believe this is the way to go, and I hope this will be useful to some people. Enjoy your day, and 